welcome back to another story with me, Miss Ellis. So today's book is called The Lumberjack's Beard. Ooh. It's a story written by Duncan Beady. Get yourself nice and comfortable. Let's begin. <laughs> Big Jim Hickory was a lumberjack. He lived by a forest in a little log cabin. He had big burly shoulders and an even bigger bristly beard. Every day he got up and did his limbering up exercises. It's very important to limber up if you're a lumberjack. After a hearty breakfast of pancakes and maple syrup, Jim slung his big trusty axe over his big burly shoulder and headed out into the forest. Chop, choppity chop, went Jim's axe echoing through the valley as he fell tree after tree after tree. Timber! After a long day of swinging, whacking, cleaving and hacking, Jim headed back to his cabin. That evening, when he was just about to go to bed, he heard a peck, peckety peck at the door. Jim looked down to see a small and very cross bird. I built a lovely new nest in my tree, shrieked the bird, and you chopped it down. Jim scratched his big bristly chin. Then he had an idea. Mm, I suppose you could move into my beard, <laughs> he said. Very well then, said the beard, and in she flew. <laughs> what an interesting plan. The next morning, Jim woke up earlier than normal due to the bird chirping away at the crack of dawn. He did his limbering up exercises, got dressed and ate his breakfast, with a little help from the new tenant in his beard. <laughs> Jim's next job was to strip all the branches and leaves from the tree trunks and burn them on the big bonfire. After a long day of chopping, snapping, burning and crackling, Jim trudged back to his cabin for a well-earned rest. No sooner had he laid down his axe than he heard a noise at the door. Scratch, scratchity, scratch. He looked down to see a very fed up looking porcupine. Oi! snapped the porcupine. I needed those leaves and pine needles to make a nice cosy shelter. Where am I going to live now? <laughs> Jim thought and scratched his big bristly chin. Hmm, well, he said, I suppose you could move into my beard too. He bent down and the porcupine crawled in. <laughs> the next morning, Jim woke up even earlier and attempted to do his limbering up exercises. He looked in the mirror and scratched his big bristly chin. Hmm. 
Yow! He got a porcupine quills in his fingers. Oh, I bet that hurt. He tried to eat his breakfast, but lost his appetite when he noticed bird poo on his shirt. Ooh, yuck. Jim's job that day was to float all the tree trunks down the river to the lumber yard. One by one, he rolled the logs into the fast flowing water. After a hard day of lugging, splashing, rolling and crashing. Uh oh, what's going to happen? Jim staggered back to his cabin. Thwomp, thwumpity thwomp went his door. He looked down to see a very angry beaver on his doorstep. I spent all day building my nice new dam and it's got smashed to bits by those logs you threw into the river. <sighs> he snarled. Without a word, Jim picked up the beaver and put him into his beard. Between the beard's chirping, the porcupine's prickling and the beaver's thwomping, Jim didn't get much sleep that night. He was too tired to do his limbering up exercises in the morning and in the beaver and the beavers thumping, tail knocking his pancakes all over the floor. Uh oh. That's it! cried Jim. I can't take it anymore. You'll have to move out today. <gasps> But where will we live? gasped his friends. As Jim scratched his big bristly chin, he had a bold and brilliant idea. He went into his bathroom, took out his trusty razor and began to shave off his big bristly beard. Then he piled it up on his porch and the bird, the porcupine, the beaver all moved into their new cosy den. That night Jim slept better than he had done for some time. He woke up and did some particularly vigorous limbering up exercises and put on a fresh plaid shirt. Then he made an enormous tower of pancakes and maple syrup. Yum, yum. After breakfast, Jim looked out of the window at the bare ground where the forest used to be and scratched his usually bare stubbly chin. Mm. And he had another brilliant idea. That morning, Jim took his trusty shovel and dug hole after hole after hole. And with his bare hands, his, sorry, his big hands, he planted tree after tree after tree. Mm. Jim's beard grew back over time. The trees took quite a bit longer. But it was worth the wait. The end. It's a really good story, isn't it? <laughs> I loved his idea of putting them into his beard. I mean, who would have thought? <laughs> and it does, it teaches us an important message, doesn't it? We shouldn't be chopping down all the trees. They take so long to grow. 
let's start looking after our planet, shall we? It's hard, isn't it? So, I hope you enjoyed the story. It was a good one, wasn't it? You take care of yourselves. I'll see you for another one shortly. Bye. If you enjoyed that story, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to reach new people. And remember to hit that subscribe button so that you can keep updated with all my new videos. Take care. Bye for now.